Okay, so first, what we're going to do is we're going to share, um, I'm going to share a video and um, make sure whatever apparatus you're using to watch this, whether it's your phone, computer, tablet, make sure that your volume is up because we, we have tested the volume several times and we know that it works. So if you're having a sound issue, it is very likely that it's your um, technology. Um, so please make sure that your sound is up. Um, and now I shall share. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lord Gardner, and along with Liz Shepard, we run Shepard and Mosley Studio here in West Newton, Massachusetts. I'd like to give you the opportunity to take a little brief tour of what we offer. Here we are in the silkscreen printing room, and we have many tables for people to be able to screen print at the same time. And as we move through the space, you can also see that we have um, a very large etching and relief printing room. I believe we have three presses in this space. And we also have access to equipment and materials that you don't necessarily have to supply yourselves. Uh, but if you're interested in printing your own edition work, then we might advise you to have some of your own equipment on hand. But as you can see, we have really nice brayers that are hanging out on our brayer wall. And we also have spaces within this large printmaking studio for people to have their own personal print area. Something that we like to provide for people who don't rent space from us, but they rent time, is we do have, we have large uh, workspaces. As we move through the space, you can see here we are at our lunch table, well, which unfortunately we're not able to participate in due to COVID. Uh, but before COVID, one of the things that we enjoyed being able to do is to take a break from our printmaking and having the opportunity to talk about uh, the art that we're working on or anything else that is uh, taking place in our lives. And the theme of the Boston Printmakers Connect show really is what is highlighted as part of uh, the Shepherd and Maudsley studio because we connect here and create a really wonderful community of artists and uh, printmakers. And as we move further through the studio space, which is 6,000 square feet, we're in the, the back end, or the back 40, as we like to say. We have the opportunity to have people in slightly more um, private studio spaces, but we also have access to a large fabric printing table, which is 11 feet long. And we can print paper or textiles on it. So thank you so much for coming to being able to see a brief tour of the studio. Reach us um, via our website, which is shepherdmaudsleystudio.com. I'm Sharon Hayes. I'm from uh, Andover, Massachusetts, and I'm a member of the Boston Printmakers and the executive board and have been for approximately nine years. Um, my studio is at the Shepherd Mosley Studio in West Newton. During the COVID pandemic, the studio, through the direction of Liz Shepherd and Rebecca Gardner, maintained an amazing artist community with the members through daily Zoom meetings, projects and even Zoom classes until we were able to cautiously return to the studio observing the restrictions and guidelines presented by the state. This community created a very strong core and focus of a wonderful and productive group of artists. The piece that I created uh, for the Providence Art Club Connect Show is a variable edition entitled Connection. 
the concept of this image was generated a year ago, last January, when my three sisters and myself walked together across the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Our youngest sister had recently successfully completed her chemotherapy protocol, and we felt the journey across the bridge connecting one side to the other was a symbolic gesture of her success and journey. The silkscreen background reflects the fragility and individual of the individual threads of the fabric um, and the but the strength that they offer when woven together, much like family, and the power of the huge bridge connecting one to the other. This spawned an interest in a series of bridges that I am currently working on, using monoprints and silk screens to create bridges in varying stages of connecting and disconnecting. The first one allowing to be uh, the uncertainty of connecting, and then the foggy bridge. Several images and stages of uncertainty and disconnect and the uncertainty of crossing a bridge. This particular image represents a bridge crossing in Pennsylvania um, that we cycled across with my brother. Uh, again, the woven connect and broken threads represent family bonds that with powerful metal framework of the bridge represents that unity of a family. Other projects that I've been working on would be a series of dresses in various forms and medium. The metal dress is a, a collagraph which reflects a, a connection with the past and a passage of time with family and children. The glasses, my own and my dad's, these are silk screen and layers of fabric that I join together to create a fading imagery. Finally, I am working on a woodblock, developing a contained imagery. The strength and the fragile threads and the con is contained by these bold lines. I enjoyed sharing my studio with you, and thank you. Um, hi, my name is Alyssa Freud, and uh, I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, I am an artist at the Shepherd Maudsley uh, print shop, and I have been with them five years. And uh, I, before that, I was a ceramicist. So um, recently, I have been working on. I can. I've been working on a series of images um, about my 90, almost 97-year-old mom, who lives in Chicago, and. Um, it started when I, f I came across some old family photos um, and during the pandemic, you know, I haven't seen her for over a year because she lives in assisted living in Chicago and I can't travel and she has, has really been quite isolated. And so I would say my first piece was that uh, image with the brown background and the blue glove and then um, the silk screen image of a portrait of my mother as a child. And I was really thinking about how isolated she was and how more childlike she is becoming. And um, so that's sort of where this whole series started out. And um, then I was thinking more about my childhood and I um, came up with the image of that sort of ubiquitous kitchen stool that lots of people had in their homes growing up, people of a certain generation. And and I thought, oh wow, that really reminds me so much of my mom because my mom would sit on that stool every day with the phone above her and talk to my grandmother on, on the phone every day. And so I just kind of, it felt like that same silk screen image of her needed to be sitting on that chair, sort of representing my childhood her, her, and her connection to her own mother. So then I, um, I started working on this 
print, uh, I did a series of four variable edition prints, which are collages, actually, um, of my mom in her more current status um, in her apartment. And um, it just sort of shows her in her apartment. It was her, That was her 95th birthday. And I, when I think of her, I think of this sort of big mess in her on her table because she's sort of losing her ability to organize things and so all stuff is all on the floor and is on the table and she's you know was there still opening very delighted and opening her cards her birthday cards and such and um, that was a pretty meaningful piece for me I, I, I thought a lot about her life when I did that and then now I am working on a new um, image um, and I've just started on this imagery and this uh, picture of her sitting in her walker uh, from behind it, and in front of her when I took that photograph there was just an empty apartment because she was getting ready to move into assisted living and um, I thought, oh, that's a really poignant and sad image. And so I'm working now on, I just have mock-ups and things. I haven't really put done any real printmaking. But it's going to be a collage, and here she is on this journey. But it doesn't feel sad to me like the woman in front of the empty apartment does. This feels sort of something that's, it's a journey, but it's there's beauty in it. And um, so that's where I am now. And um, I have been printing. I'm, I'm very influenced by the work of Romare Bearden. And I feel like his beautiful collages just tell these poignant stories. And so right now I have been um, uh, printing a series of patterns that I may use as part of a background in a piece like this. So um, I, it's mono printing, and I had inked up a piece of fabric which has this sort of beautiful um, uh, texture to it, and I printed with ink. And so I've just I just put it through the uh, press a few minutes ago, and now I pull off the I pull the print. And here is sort of a, a green background with these sort of lovely orange tree-like images. And, and I will show you the plate in a minute. And um, this is it. It's a piece of fabric that has a stiffener on it and I can um, roll ink on it. So it's a relief print. And um, yeah, so that's that is the uh, mono print part of it. And um, so then I have a whole like library of this kind of mono printing that I can insert into my collages as background. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I, I really love multimedia um, approach to printmaking. And uh, this is some of the work I've been doing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Johns. I make silkscreen prints. Uh, I've been a member of the studio here for about a year and a half, and a member of the Boston Printmakers uh, for about a year. And uh, my piece, Synthetic Connect, is in the Connect show. Um, it's a three-color silkscreen print, and it uh, the way it relates to Connect is it's about social media and this this um, this word that everybody uses about connection and being connected in this day and age. Um, so I thought I would take the approach of um, looking at social media and how we're really we're synthetically connected. We're not really really connected to people. And in fact, some, in some ways we're more isolated than ever. Um, and so the piece integrates um, an old 1950s illustration um, with typography. There's also a lot of uh, social media corporate logos integrated into it and there's a, an element of um, hidden meaning in it because the some of the type is flipped and reversed or upside down so depending on what you want you can you can take different levels of meaning uh, from the piece if you look 
deeper or not. And I also um, am interested in um, notable figures of history. So I have a, a series of prints I do called Meet Your Heroes. So in the case of, well, I did one on Major Taylor, uh, who was a famous cyclist uh, around the last turn of the last century. Um, and he just has an incredible story. He's a really heroic uh, athlete and just an amazing man. As well as the Heroes series, I'm really interested in technology and how it affects society um, and also just issues in the world that are going on in the world. Um, so the, the piece with the sheep um, is all about surveillance technology and uh, the idea of you know Alexa or Google uh, watching what we're doing at home. And it's, the piece is called building, building the Cage. And the idea is that the more we embrace these technologies and gadgets, um, in society, the the worse off we're really becoming, but we don't know it yet. Um, I think it's something that, um, if you look at society and society in general, we're we're building ourselves a cage. I did a piece on Trump, uh, a little upset about uh, Trump in the last four years, so I thought I would do a artwork on him. He's depicted as a as a chest thumping uh, gorilla, and uh, the type that's reversed in it. Um, is says bull in a china shop, but sort of set up the way he would say, he always pronounces China, Gina, it seems, which is irritating. So uh, so it's bull in a Gina shop. Um, and you can either read that line of text or you can just see it as a graphic element. I really like the idea of having many layers of meaning in a piece. So uh, I like that you could approach a artwork and just visually enjoy it from the get-go. But then if you look closer, you can start to read in, into elements in it, so I, I try to hide text into the, the uh, pieces I do, many times reversed or just disguised or tucked in or layered. Um, so if someone were to really take the time, I've, I've, it basically I pepper the pieces with hidden symbols and text um, that can lead those people to viewers to, um, to learn more about the subject matter. This is the most recent thing I'm working on. Um, it's for a friend's 50th birthday. It's a three color print. Uh, portrait of my friend. So I, I started with a whole series of different color uh, color uh, layers for the face layer. Um, in this case, I added by hand gold uh, gold paint and then blue spray paint with uh, sort of a, wa a waxy white pencil mark. And then we'll just see what happens when I layer it. I like the idea of sort of chance and um, just seeing sometimes if there'll be a happy accident in, um, in the work. So yeah, producing 10 of them and hopefully one will be good. So, um, hi, my name is Rebecca Lord Gardner, and I am co-founder of the Shepherd and Maudsley Studio, along with Liz Shepherd. And the piece that I did for the show Connect um, is based on shipbuilding and family history um, in Newburyport, Massachusetts. What I did with looking at the theme was actually, instead of thinking about the technology of today, I thought about looking back in time and how we communicated mostly with letters and sometimes if your family was living abroad um, you know still in England or Europe or wherever else the way your uh, communications your letters was transported was through the ships so the my pieces are titled nautical one and nautical two and the imagery itself is based on uh, looking at a cross-section of the very large ropes the body of work that this comes from um, started out with a piece that I did at the uh, Maudsley State um, Park for sculpture at Maudsley State Park and that piece was what does Newburyport, uh, what does the Merrimack River bring back to Newburyport? And it's this combination of working with print and 3D work that helps me think about the larger, the work in its larger context. Instead of looking specifically at uh, the technology of today, which is the Zoom, um, using my phone, I really wanted to 
delve deeper into that history of the letter writing, the slower times, and that's what I tried to achieve um, in my screen print. Then the screen print is actually a collage um, with uh, Japanese tissue paper um, in conjunction with using um, some thread, which was to evoke uh, the larger ropes that were used in the shipbuilding. Hi, I'm Suzanne Mosley, and I'm part of the Boston um, Printmakers, and I am at the uh, Shepherd Modsley Studio in West Newton. This is my um, my space, and I've uh, wanted to talk about the piece that I submitted to the show, and um, and then take you through some of my more recent work. So the piece that I submitted for the Boston Printmakers is a polymer print that I had uh, done during a um, a, a week-long program at Castle Hill in Truro on the Cape and um, they uh, the piece I thought worked well with the connect theme because it is about um, kind of slowing down and drinking a cup of tea and doing some journaling and I felt that um, during this past year that was a uh, you know, it was a time of slowing down, a time of introspection and journaling. So I thought that was a relevant piece. Um, since I made those prints, um, I have joined the Shepherd Modsley Studio, and here I've grown a lot in some new directions with some of the teaching that I've had here. Um, I spent a year doing screen printing for the first time and really enjoyed layering that the series that I created with for screen printing was based on um, fragmented memory and um, it was uh, combining a lot of different details of a past relationship um, and just kind of the, the happy vibrant memories associated with that. I didn't end up going from uh, from screen printing to screen printing on woodblock and eventually I um, learned from a fellow studio mate how to do um, mounting onto the wood panels and I have really liked that evolution of the the screen prints in that way. Um, after screen printing I started doing a lot of the cyanotype um, printing and I have really enjoyed trying to come up with a range of color in a, a process that's really just blue and white and um, a lot of that was done through uh, the wet process of uh, putting the the prints out into the the sun and the weather and adding soap and vinegar and all kinds of um, different uh, properties to the prints to make them something different happen in the sun so these are all done in the out in the sun they're solar prints um, and I am enjoying now taking what I've learned from the solar printing and then adding, going back into my wood blocks and or adding screens on top. So starting again to combine the processes, which is kind of I think where I'm happiest. I tend to be more of a process artist than um, a planned compositional artist. And so I gather up an idea and a lot of materials and then I just kind of play and see what happens. Prior to being here at Shepard Mudsley, um, I was in a studio by myself and I found that I was not very um, inspired alone and that all my printmaking learning had been done in a communal space and so ultimately finding this space and going back into a communal um, environment has inspired me both in uh, the ideas behind the work I do as well as in teaching and growing as, a, as an artist which is so important. So. And then lastly, uh, during the pandemic, having a community and a, and a place to come and people to see and to, to have some regularity was, a, it was really valuable. Hi, my name is Sandra Cardillo. I'm a member here at the Shepherd and Maudsley Studio. I'm also uh, a member of the Boston Printmakers and I've been a member since 2014. When I joined the studio a year and a half ago, I had no idea um, what a benefit it would be to belong to a community of artists. But during the quarantine, um, Liz and Rebecca held Zoom meetings and we did workshops. So we were in constant contact 
um, with the other members of the studio and it proved to be um, very advantageous. We did workshops in working with mixed media, whatever we had at hand, we had to use um, the materials, be kind of inventive um, because we didn't all have our, pro our materials at home. So this um, gave me an idea to use an older print that I had. And the work that I put into this show, Connect, um, I made from an old solar plate that I did in a workshop a few years ago. And the way I processed the plate was So Sandra, do you know why it, so that's the whole video. Do you want to turn your mic on, Sandra? Yeah, no, there should be. There's a lot more. more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the last one, but um, it goes on for a little bit. Okay, let me check. Hmm. <laughs> Do you also have the full video listed on your YouTube page? Um, Renee, do you, is it on the YouTube page yet? I, th I think Renee's in the audience. They were going to put it on the YouTube page. I, I don't have it on the YouTube page, but I'm going to queue it up on my computer and maybe I can share it. Oh, that'd be great, Renee. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure why that happened. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so now's a good time to put your questions in the chat before you forget them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Renee. The Maudsley Studio. I'm also uh, a member of the Boston Printmakers, and I've been a member since 2014. When I joined the studio a year and a half ago, I had no idea um, what a benefit it would be to belong to a community of artists. But during the quarantine, um, Renee, do you have your audio sharing on? Because I could hear it for one second and then the, and then oh, the audio. This, um, there you go. Gave me an idea to use an older print that I had. And the work that I put into this show, Connect, um, I made from an old solar plate that I did in a workshop a few years ago. And the way I processed the plate was um, I painted directly onto the plate, much as you would like a monoprint. And um, I exposed it in the sun for two to three hours so that it got a very deep bite. And this gave me a plate that had, um, could be inked either intaglio or relief. So it was a very versatile plate. So what I decided to do is to take this plate and cut it down and take sections of it and try to repurpose it and try to make relationships between the different varying um, areas of the plate that I liked. For about a year now, I've been working in silkscreen and cyanotype. With these prints, I uh, used cyanotype for the background. Um, I made a stencil out of um, overlapping pieces of tracing paper to give me the varying shades of the blue in the, in the background. I was trying to get a feeling of space um, the, I used an old wood block also, and with stencils, 
use parts of the wood block to create these orb-like shapes that are floating through the space. And um, I, f I felt I wanted them to be moving and connecting. The current series I'm working on um, is a silk screen. Again, I'm using photographs that I made um, at an area of a, of a pond area where the ice was thawing and breaking up into these beautiful patterns. And, um, but I wanted to learn how to break down the images in Photoshop into CMYK. So um, because other people in the studio were interested in learning this, um, Liz gave us a workshop and this is another advantage of becoming, of being a part of the studio. Um, she gave us the workshop and um, so these pieces are the beginnings uh, of the breakdown using different colors, working with the four screens that I've made and um, just figuring out how the colors are reacting, um, putting them in different orders. Um, my process is generally gathering, gathering, um, using as much information, um, and then until the process starts to settle in and it helps me to evolve eventually into the imagery that I probably end up with. Um, it's, a, it's a process of gathering and then simplifying. Coming to the studio every day, I feel, um, is very energizing. It's a stimulating atmosphere and it's very motivating. This, the work in this Connect show too, um, with the members of the Boston Printmakers is a very inspiring show. It, I'm very proud to be a member of the Boston Printmakers. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Sorry about that technological problem. That's my fault. Um, so I'm going to, so as your questions come into your head, put them right in the chat and we'll work through the questions as they are, um, as they are listed. I will, uh, one question that I have to sort of start things off is, I think this is probably a good question for Rebecca. Um, I would love to learn a little bit about the genesis of um, where the where the idea for a studio like this came from and, and what the process was like for you all in starting the studio and, and any of your history. Um, thank you. Uh, so I actually ended up joining Liz Shepard who uh, previously had studios in her home in Cambridge. And then for about, um, she was there for a couple of years and then she expanded to about 1500 square feet in the South End. Um, and she was there for eight plus years. So it was um, due to losing her lease in the South End that I asked her if she was you know, thinking of moving. And if that was the case, then was she interested in having a partner to potentially expand? And so uh, part of my background um, is textile printing. I had, um, I had worked at the fabric workshop in Philadelphia. And so I had some background in printing on, um, you know, uh, textile tables. So we entertained the idea of doubling the space and putting in the fabric table to be able to expand, um, you know, just the, you know, the options of, of what people could do. So we were fortunate to work actually with um, one of our former members, um, Ariel Zabo, who is a Boston printmaker. And she helped us find um, our space in West Newton. And as we had mentioned in the video, it's 6,000 square feet and um, sort of building on Liz's legacy of, you know, being very, in, um, you know, welcoming and inviting and her tremendous, um, teaching capacity, it just, the, um, you know, the community just built off from there. A lot of people moved with us, which was absolutely fabulous. And Liz and I just so appreciate, you know, what everybody has done, especially during the pandemic, because um, you all stuck with us, <laughs> which, um, you know, we truly appreciate. And, it, you know, the community just, 
I can't thank you all enough um, for, you know, being who you are and just bringing everything that you do, all the different things that people do and um, contribute. And um, we don't just stick with, you know, printmaking. If somebody wants to learn and do something else, um, we're like, oh, you know, what is that? What do you want to do? And, you know, sometimes we're bringing in an outside instructor. Um, so it's really, we're, I would say, organic um, in the makeup of the, the people, the processes and the space. So um, I guess that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> that's great. That's, very, that's well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll get into some individual questions for the artists. So um, for all the artists, when, when I ask you a question, just remember to unmute. Um, so the first question is for Alyssa. Um, and the question is, Alyssa, can you talk more about what a variable edition print is that you mentioned in your interview? Oh, sure. Um, a variable edition is <clears throat> four prints that are basically the same, but not quite. There's like little differences, like in this particular um, example was the, the um, backgrounds of that print of my mother opening her cards were different shades of pink. But I would and then say. usually how many of those um, are you doing? So are there like four, four variations or do you change even how many different ways you change it? Um, no, I, it just kind of depends on what the process ends up being. Um, this it was very organic in nature. Um, uh, some of them, are, like for example, the backgrounds that were not as pink, some of them were ghosts of mm -hmm. the first plate. So, um, but, but in that case, that was the only thing that was different. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another question, this is for all the artists in the group. Um, do you ever put all of your prints up together or hang them together at the studio to sort of experiment and see how you might be influencing each other aesthetically? That's from Renee. And anyone can answer that, whoever feels most comfortable answering that one. I will. Um, we haven't done that yet, but uh, I think that's a really great idea. Um, you know, it is a way to, as you say, to see who's influencing whom and, um, you know, who knows what potential body of work could grow out of that. And then I have another question sort of coming off of that. Do you, um, is there a space within the studio where you, where you show work or, or do you ever do shows on site or do you do shows off site? With your with the artists who are associated with the studio. Well, thank you for that question. <laughs> um, that was teed up perfectly because we uh, have a show coming up um, at the Fort Point Artist <clears throat> Community at their 300 Summer Street Gallery um, in Boston, uh, in the Fort Point Channel area, and we're actually installing it on Sunday. Um, and we will have information about how to see it. Um, and the hours and everything, if you go to our website, um, there'll also be a contact phone number for uh, potential appointments outside of um, those times. Um, but we have not done anything um, uh, except for Newton Open Studios for showing our work. That's great, thank you for sharing. Um, this is uh, sort of a comment, it says, thank you so much for this program. I've viewed the show numerous times, so I'm familiar with the work you were discussing. Wonderful to have the pieces explained and your process, uh, invaluable information for all of us. Um, this question is for Suzanne. Um, and the question is, could Suzanne talk more about adding soap and vinegar to a cyanotype developing in the sun and sort of what that process is like? Um, so the uh, cyanotype process is basically basically uh, covering a piece of paper with uh, an, emulsif uh, an emulsion that's made of cyanotype. And, um, and then you can put objects and or uh, negatives or positives over it and put it out in the sun for exposure. Um, that yields, you know, kind of a, 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 a uh, photographic image but that's just the beginning of working with cyanotype. You can use household products. Um, it's basically al acid and alkaline chemistry. You can use um, vinegar and soap suds and bleaches and all kinds of different household items and 
add that onto, you could spray it on or, you know, um, use an eyedropper or smush it around with your hands, however you want to. And that will create variability um, of the emulsion, creating a wider range of colors, as well as some different, um, you know, kind of uh, effects that you intend or don't intend. That's great. Thank you. Um, another question is, a few of the artists mentioned an art background other than printmaking. Did you, uh, did or do you all work in different media like painting or photography, et cetera? So, and that's a question for all of you. So whoever feels comfortable answering that can chime in. Um, Alyssa, if you wanna make sure that you're unmuted. Um, mm -hmm. I was a ceramicist for 20 years and I, I still feel like that informs <laughs> making um so there's that and uh i don't know oh well rebecca's textile artist how about sharon and sandra for you two um i i went to art school so i did have you know painting and drawing and stuff but um the minute when i finally got into printmaking i it just clicked and i realized this is the way i like to express myself and uh, the whole idea of it being in a communal setting, I realized it's so different from being a painter stuck in your little studio all by yourself. You know, it's just, a, it's a totally different thing. And plus I like the process. I'm very process oriented, so. Yeah, that's great. And for you, Sharon, make sure you're on mute. Um. Yes, I, I uh, studied at the um, museum school and of course you're you know you're um, exposed to endless means of, of different processes uh, and I was primarily a, a painter and then I got into the print studio and it was just like another world and once again it is about the process it is about the excitement of pulling that print and wow, something happened that you hadn't even planned. And uh, so I think, you know, and I think there's in every setting, there's a, um, a kind of community with printmakers. They're very willing to share concepts and ideas and, and they get very enthusiastic about something that you're doing or you about something they're doing. And they can segue into your own work. Very sharing, um, I find, all printmakers. Uh, it's a wonderful area to work in. That's great. And for you, Suzanne? Yeah, I have a um, kind of a varied design background before I got into printmaking. I worked in advertising for a long time and um, went back to school for graphic and web design and as well as took some textile design classes. So I've always had a very graphic sense and I think that drew me into printmaking because um, there's a lot of graphic style kind of looks and feels. Um, and I also am a more process driven artist and it gives you, you know, an incredible array of, of uh, chance and expression um, and variability. So that's always been great, but it has always been a communal experience for me. And, and um, so I've been really happy to find a community once again to work with because it just, it you know, makes all the difference in uh, what I learn, what I am inspired to do and, and what I produce. That's great. Thank you for um, sharing. I just wanted to say that uh, Liz, um, Liz has introduced many of us to Photoshop and using that as a really productive tool, especially in silkscreen, but in a number of other ways. And uh, I'm just really grateful to ha just have that as another tool in my toolbox. That's great. And Rebecca, do you have your, it says you have your hand raised. Do you want to share something? <laughs> uh, so besides textiles, like um, Alyssa mentioned, um, I also have a background in bookbinding from the North Bennett Street School. So that's where some of the sculpture um, aspects come. So the 2D definitely informed the 3D and, and vice versa. That's great. Very, very cool. And then I, I can't see Chris's name on here anywhere. Is Chris, if Chris is here and, and Chris, if you'd like to share, I just, there is someone who, it just says iPad. I wasn't sure if that was Chris, but if not, that's okay. Um, another question that I have personally is a number of you talked about, um, you know, all the different processes that go into making different bodies of work and experimenting with different images. And as part of that, I'm sure some of you are either accidentally or purposefully sort of destroying things and breaking things up. I think Sandra talked about this a little bit. Um, and this is a question that any of you can answer though. Um, what's your experience of that, of, trying to 
make something and either accidentally or purposefully destroying one print in order to make another, destroying one image in order to make another. Is, do you have any advice for people who have a hard time letting go of something like that in order to make something better? Um, I, I always felt that when I finish a piece, I love the whole process of getting it together. When I finally finish it, I love for it to go some to somebody else's house. You know, like <laughs> I, I'm I'm happy when someone wants to buy one of my prints or something. And I also have been really like during this whole pandemic and stuff, like using things that I already have. We all save old prints. Like we're always told, don't throw anything away. You know, like <laughs> even like your um, scrap papers. And so during this pandemic, it really got me going on using old prints, painting on top. Um, we were doing some paste paper painting. Uh, someone from the studio was showed me how to do that. And um, it's so rewarding to not, you know, to be able to use up this stuff. It doesn't end in a landfill. It's not sitting in a drawer and it becomes something else. And uh, I, I love it. I love for somebody to take my pa paintings away, my prints away. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's a good, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, another question that came in was, uh, and this is probably a good one, I think, for Rebecca, is what workshops are happening next at the studio and how can uh, how can we get involved? So we do have um, Intro to Silkscreen, which uh, Liz will be teaching. I think there's um, a spot for one more person. It's an in-person, our first one since COVID. And um, I believe that's Saturday, April 24th, and the second Saturday will be Saturday, May 1st. Um, uh, you can sign up for our newsletter, uh, which you can do via our website, and then you can be on our MailChimp, um, which we do send out weekly, which uh, either you know discusses what's happening at the studio, whether it's a workshop or you know highlighting um, a member, studio member, and their work. Uh, but that's the best way to learn more is either to follow us, um, you know, through the newsletter or just to check out our website, please. Thank you. That's great, Rebecca. Um, this is another comment from, from Renee. It says, Printmakers Rock, so many of you are accomplished in so many media. I admire your abilities to combine media, take risks, and push the media with, hu with huge success. And printmakers also know good, few, good food and community. What was on the menu during the outside lunch? <laughs> oh that was um liz made crepes uh, wow. so she, yeah it was someone's it was three people's birthday so she brought the pan in and um yeah we we ate outside and she made crepes and we had dessert crepes and regular crepes and well they were ham and cheese yeah we <laughs> ham and cheese and we had strawberry and chocolate hot fudge chocolate mm -hmm. oh Divine. <laughs> I think the values of Shepard Maudsley are very similar to the values of the Providence Art Club. I'm, I'm glad that you all are exhibiting yeah. with us because I think the, the sensibility is basically the same. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions you'd like to put in the chat? We still have a couple minutes. Be happy to take a few more questions from you. Um, let's see. Um, so another comment in the chat is, I am currently experimenting and creating my own inks from the environment around uh, where I live and work, plants, as well as urban detritus. I would like to use these for block and lino printing, but I am having trouble finding a suitable thickener for making my own ink. Um, I've tried sodium alginate, but stumped for any better ideas for a simple traditional thickener that I could use in making my own printmaking ink. Do any of you have any advice about that? Have you any experience with making your own inks? No. 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 And I have no advice. I, I have, excuse me, I, I have a recommendation that to contact Zia Mays in Western Mass, they make their own ink. Oh, great. Good Thank point. you. Thank you, Renee. Um, prints are famously portable. Have the artists sent out any work into the world to places you can't go yourself during this pandemic? Have you sent any things out to any shows? I mean, for some of you, it might be even the show that's at the art club right now. Maybe you haven't even seen your work in that. I know a number of you have been there, but um, do any of you have experience with that, sending your work out to shows really far away that you've never been to? Well, I think several of, of the individual from the studio had shown at Gallery Twist and it was all virtual. Um, I think um, I was in two of the past shows and 
and uh, they were virtual and they did a beautiful job. It's in a beautiful home in Lexington and they do a fabulous job of setting up vignettes to show and illustrate, uh, uh, highlight the artwork. But the, um, uh, the virtual show was beautiful, but we, nobody could attend for those two shows. Now they're, they're setting up, much like you have this time, Michael, with setting up times and specific times and limiting the attendance. Yeah. Um, another question is, any advice for a very lapsed printmaker getting started again? I am located in Calgary, Canada. <laughs> so any have any of you stepped away from printmaking and then come back to it after a long pause? Or what are your advice for for that and for Hillary? Just do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, actually, finding a community is a great way to start. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good piece of advice. Or take a workshop. Workshop, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Workshops are at the local university or college. They always have adult ed classes and get meeting more of the uh, people in the community. You find out there are other uh, um, alternatives besides the schools. I recommend um, the ZMAs right now has a, quite a few um, courses that they're doing uh, over Zoom and they're excellent quality. So um, yeah, ZMAs, great resource. That's great. Um, for working uh, or doing workshops at Shepherd Maudsley, do you have to, do you ask printmakers to show um, proficiency in using different types of presses before they're able to use your presses or is someone there to assist people who haven't used a press before if someone's really new to printmaking? So um, if somebody wants to come and uh, become a, a member, um, usually what we do is invite them in and find out what it is that they're interested in learning or expanding on. Um, and Liz usually is the one who gives, um, when they're ready to become a member, the overview um, of how things work and how, you know, we do things at Shepherd and Maudsley. But um, if you don't have experience with a certain technique, but you're experienced in other techniques, um, we usually suggest to take a, a workshop. So for example, somebody might be an etcher, but they want to learn about screen printing. So we'll say, come take screen printing. And then we see how they're, how they're working in the screen printing class. And after a couple of sessions, then pretty much we can let them loose. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but we do have shop techs available. And if you want a little more hands-on instruction, then we might recommend, um, uh, contracting with our shop tech um, to have some exclusive one-on-one -on -one time. Um, but that's not always necessary. It's sort of, you know, even if you're rusty at something, um, it may only just take, you know, a workshop or a couple of, you know, opportunities to see what's going on and you're back in the saddle again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like riding a bike. The, the, the wheels are the same. There's wheels on a yes. bike. Um, <laughs> So uh, another question from Hillary is a, another technical question. Have any of you used a tabletop press like the Richesons and do you like it? What's your experience with tabletop presses? Have any of you used those before? Yeah, so, so you're all primarily using re like really serious studio presses on all your work. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for the chat? And if not, I will ask the, because we're nearing our seven o'clock hour, so I will do our little wrap up. Um, well, first I would say, thank you for putting together this wonderful video where we got to see a little slices of what all different people are doing. And, and I've said this at several of the other programs we've had, and I think this program is just another testament to this, that, you know, printmaking is not just silkscreen or etching or whatever, you know, think of all the different ways that all of you are using it. And it's remarkable how much diversity you can find just within the printmaking community and all the wonderful technologies you're employing and, and all the, you know, I, whether it's textile or Photoshop or whatever it is, you're, I mean, all the amazing things that printmakers are doing right now is really exciting and fun. Um, and I would like to thank Renee again for putting together this whole group of talks. I wanna thank um, Sharon and Sandra for keeping helping keep me organized on this specific program. And thank you to everyone at Shepherd Mosley again for the video and for making yourselves available tonight to talk about your work. Um, I would encourage you to visit uh, Shepherd Mosley's website. It's in the email that I sent you earlier today. Um, so you can visit them there and explore the work that they have coming up. 
Um, my last question in all these programs is always the same because my my favorite thing is when artists, you know, a lot of the artists I know when you ask them what their favorite thing is, you know, they, they'll say or favorite artwork, you know, they always say like the next one. And I think that's a really good answer. I think that's something that we can all, you know, especially now we're all looking forward, hopefully to some level of normalcy coming around the corner. Um, so a question for all the artists and uh, we can go in no particular order, doesn't matter. Uh, what's something that you're working on right now, either at the studio or outside the studio that you're excited about and what's next for each of you? Well, I just, I continue working on uh, bridges and I have some new uh, new views of, of bridges, looking at the structure from the floor of the bridge and looking up. So that's my moment is looking into the sky. That's great, thank you. Well, I'm working on those um, images of these ice patterns and I'm starting small and I'm, I'm going to be getting bigger. It's I, I haven't found the right means that I want to use to express these um, moments in the woods that I found. So um, it, I think I'll be working on that for quite a while. That's great, Suzanne. I'm um, I'm taking my um, cyan type exploring and I'm combining it with silk screening and doing a series based on spending um, most of the pandemic on the Cape and taking a lot of photographs and just kind of pulling together um, that work. I'm also taking a class at Harvard on plant-based uh, photo processes. And I'm taking some of the learning from that and applying it into the cyanotype as I um, create this new series. That's great, exciting. And then maybe Alyssa next. And don't forget to unmute. <laughs> um. I needed to take a break from my mother. <laughs> so I have been working on uh, woodcuts uh, and what I see out my window, which is just really, really fun and enjoying the color. But I am getting back into uh, what, her, what her continuing journey is. So I, I'm sticking to it. That's great, that's great. And then Rebecca? So I'm beginning to work on um, the next sculpture project that will be at Sculpture at Maudsley State Park, um, which is in September. And this piece is based on um, redlining, um, in particular in Baltimore. Um, so it's going to be um, most likely silk screening on Evalon, which is a microfilament textile, and incorporating um, more of the rope and hopefully have it suspend from a tree. That's exciting. See, just in those answers, you see how, how much diversity there is in the printmaking community, all the exciting things you all have coming up next. Um, Renee put in the chat, uh, don't forget that you have an annual meeting coming up. Um, if you're a member of Boston Printmakers, uh, join us for the annual meeting if you can. It's May 2nd, and we sent out a message for an RSVP. It's going to be on Zoom. So Renee, did you wanna say anything about that before we go for the Boston Printmaker folks? Thank you. You just read it out loud for me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Michael. This has been absolutely amazing. And uh, we all agree that you're the best Zoom MC in all of the Zooms <laughs> that we've attended. At least thank you so time. much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I want to thank you so much, Michael, just for guiding the Zoom this evening and and um, and doing the uh, hosting the video tour. You're you're really the chief you know, mantra for Zoom meetings, I think. And on, on behalf of the Boston printmakers, I, I want to thank you very much uh, and the Providence Art Club for hosting and presenting the small print show uh, connections. We appreciate everything you and your gallery and your assistant, um, Bree Turner and the Providence Art Club board and members contributed to make this such a really successful show. Um, I also want to thank all of the Boston uh, printmaker artist for producing again an outstanding body of work for the Connect show and certainly my fellow artist at the Shepherd Mosley studio for participating in this video uh, production directed by Sandy Cardello and the great videographer James Coleman. Uh, the, the Connect show will now become uh, a traveling show for the next two years and with the challenges of COVID we're just now putting together our calendar for, for the show for this event uh, for the next two years. Um, but we regard this show at the Providence Art Club as 
a phenomenal beginning of the Connect show. And we thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you. It's been a really fun experience working with you all and, and we've all enjoyed it so much. And, and again, if you have time in the next couple of days and you'd like to come down and see it, we'd be happy to facilitate that. So thank you all and have a great night. Thanks everyone. This has been thank fun. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.